Hi, this is Jennifer Dono, and you're watching the Ovali live stream class here on Friday, June 29th. And we're going to be talking about the Can Spam Act in this class, and as part of the Cloud Maven, it's a weekly live stream that we do here at 11 a.m. Pacific uh, to Eastern every Friday. Uh, in the Ovalai TV studio and uh, like I said we're specifically talking about the CAN Spam Act today and if you're not familiar with that it's something that the FTC regulates and it makes sure that businesses um, organizations, anyone really that's sending bulk emails or commercially related emails, um, that they comply with um, a number of points to make sure that we're not sending out communications that are going to hurt consumers or trick them or mislead them in any way. Um, so most of you are familiar with um, spam in the form of something that would send some kind of virus to infect your computer or maybe it has some kind of thing where um, you know, it's someone sending out those messages from like different kings that say, I want to give you money or some kind of phishing scheme where it's trying to get information from you. Today, we're really speaking about spam in the form of us small businesses. We, we just want our message to be heard, right? We want to get in front of the right people and sometimes we forget uh, that we need to make sure that we're approaching this relationship in a way that is um, non-confrontational. Um, not misleading and also not um, interruptive, I guess. So we're going to be talking specifically about the Can Spam Act today. And uh, so if you have questions, I'm unfortunately not on the live chat right now, um, but definitely tweet me our our Twitter handle. I'll put it right here on um, the lower third is Ovali, and I'll make sure that I'm on Twitter for the rest of the day. Also, if you're watching the recorded video, always feel free to reach out to me. My email is jennifer at ovali.com, and I try and answer the emails as fast as I can. Um, but for this live class, we're going to go ahead and go through some points of how we can be compliant with this big guy, the, the FTC and the Can Spam Act. And the reason why it was put together was really to protect consumers. That's what the FTC does. Um, protect consumers from malicious emails um, and also just uh, sneaky marketing tactics, right? That's what they do. You've seen the last, um, in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of regulations that's come out as far as bloggers. It's something we'll have to cover too in the future in one of these live classes is how to comply with the FTC and how to communicate different sponsored messages, things like that. Another class. But the Can Spam Act was created out of um, the need to, like I was saying, protect consumers. And a lot of it has to do with um, the P and the acronym is pornography. Um, so it does have that um, very bad boy kind of um, email collecting, sending out viruses, phishing for information, that type of thing. So two different areas. We're speaking on the, the marketing area here for small businesses, specifically speaking to small business owners. So... To get started, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what is considered spam, right? The Can Spam Act applies to all commercial messages uh, along with bulk messaging, right? Any electronic mail message, the primary purpose of which is the commercial advertisement or promotion of a commercial product or service. And so that's pretty broad there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, before we get into the next slide, what exactly is a commercial message? And if you go back to the site, and I'll make sure that I include a link along with this video of where you can find out more information, but if you just Google the Can Spam Act, you can find out more um, on your own. But the big thing here is that a commercial message is one where you don't have a previous relationship with someone, right? You're basically going out and saying, hey, here's a new service that we offer. Here's a service that we offer. Here's an upcoming event, um, that type of a thing, right? So if you are a web hosting member today, here's the flip side. If you're a web hosting member today and I email you without you opting in or anything like that, um, that, that we have um, a change in our terms of services or maybe your plan that you've purchased already, you're an ongoing customer, you're already that you've already purchased a product for me um, and I email you some information about how that product is changing, that's no longer considered a commercial email. It's considered a relationship-based email and therefore Can Spam Act does not uh, apply specifically to that message. And so there's a lot of variations as far as what a commercial message is seen as. And now another thing, I mentioned the opt-in factor and a lot of small businesses are missing this because I see this all the time on Twitter and all the time on Facebook why is this person spamming me? I did not opt into this list. 
Can Spam Act does not apply to opt-ins, right? Um, so it actually applies to people that have an opt-in to it. It's a commercial advertisement that you're getting in your e- your inbox. And so it just needs to make sure that it follows a number of things that we'll be talking about in a moment, and you're good to go, right? You've complied with the Can Spam Act. We're going to talk about why that is a tricky gray area in just a second, though, because there's a lot more than just what legally goes into sending an email like that. So again, just to reiterate, sending some someone that has talked to you at a networking event an email that hasn't necessarily opted into any list is not going against the Can Spam Act. It's not forcing someone to opt into an email list. It's saying that if they have not specifically opted in, you're sending them a commercial message that you need to include these things in it. So let's talk briefly about what happens if we send um, a spam message, right? So a commercial message that doesn't include the items that we'll be talking about in just a second. Now, the first topic is, and that's kind of the the gray area here, is that even if you follow all of these mess, all of the um the the different principles to apply to the Can Spam Act, you're still going to annoy your target market and tarnish your brand image. All right. Um, so this kind of spammy feel that we were talking about with Twitter and that if someone didn't opt in or they're not looking to receive your emails, make sure that it, you follow the Can Spam Act to the, to the T so that you won't be, you still might be labeled a spam, but at least if someone were to come out to you and say, you know, complain to the FTC, if you've gotten really bad, if you've gotten to that point, that's not good. Um, you would at least have some, you know, uh, record saying, hey, I, I followed it. So it's okay. I'm not. I'm not going against the Can Spam Act. But you could also be blacklisted. So let's say that you followed stuff. Someone didn't opt in. They've been trying to opt out. Let's say that, and you didn't provide them with that ability to opt out. You could be blacklisted. And that's not only just you. If you are on a shared server, that IP address. If you're sharing your IP address specifically. That entire, everyone on that shared IP address is going to be blacklisted as well. So you need to make sure that you're careful not only for your own business, but also for the rest of the businesses that are on the server. And what that does is that that when you go through filters, you'll be put into the junk mailbox, your email won't be delivered, all sorts of fun stuff will happen with that. So just make sure that you don't annoy people, you don't, that you do comply with the Can Spam Act. And the last piece is being reported to the FTC, and that's what I mentioned briefly before, was that uh, if it really does become an issue, you would be reported to the FTC, and there's a fines, um, fines up to per email sixteen thousand dollars. So, really, uh, the FTC is there to protect some of the the very bad offenders. So, the people that send out viruses, that fish for information, that collect email addresses illegally, that type of stuff. And so, that's where a lot of it applies to. But um, still, as a small business owner, just be aware of the fact that you should be complying with all of it and that if the FTC finds is not something that's threatening right now, just think about your brand image. So now we're going to talk about how to comply. We've been kind of skirting around the issue, but now let's really just talk about it now. The first point is that your header information must accurately identify who you are as a sender. So we're talking about the header here and a lot of this goes back into that phishing statement. Um, So you get some Every once in a while you'll get emails from like B of A or PayPal or something like that where things happen and it's it's masked. So um, you can tell the email up above is not one that's from B of A, um, but it makes it look like B of A is contacting you, right? So that's a complete violation of the Can Spam Act. Um, but also just for small business owners, we're talking about the marketing image here, your image personally. Um, the header information should reflect who is who is sending. Your two should say something about the company. If you're sending it from a Gmail address, you know, try and use your name, .com, your professional email if you just want to make sure that you look good and you don't look spammy. Um, the next one is that your subject must be true. Um, and again, this is coming from a legal standpoint. It cannot mislead the reader about the contents of the email. And so misleading the reader, a, a lot of people use tricky t- uh, marketing tactics to get people to open stuff. And th- that wouldn't necessarily be something that would mislead the reader. It could still have something to do with what's the, what is in the contents. Um, again, it goes back to the masking, pretending you're B of A, pretending you're PayPal, that type of stuff. But still, make sure that your subject is revolving around your content and you're not 
just think about those icky infomercials that you look at and you're like, oh, that's way too much of an ad. That's way too much of a pull here and there. And try and make sure that if you're trying to use marketing or marketing copy specifically in your subject, that it still relates in somewhat to what someone's going to be clicking through to open. So the next point is that you must include in every email a means to opt out. This is where small businesses go wrong, okay? This opt out area. From further communication, the method must be easy for the reader and for the sender to implement. All right, so the opt out here is really what we have in question for small business owners. So while you don't need someone to opt into the email, you do need to make sure that it's uh, a very easy method for them to get off of your list. And you have to make it so that you actually perform taking them off the list. I believe it's within 10 days. So you need to have a system in place to do that. A lot of you are emailing, and that's another that's another topic, is you're emailing from um, Outlook or from Hotmail or something like that where you're putting everyone in the blind carbon copy field, right? And then you're just sending out these lists because it's easy for you and it's fast. Well, that's the easiest way to get blacklisted and to annoy, make people get annoyed from your brand, right? Um, so making sure that you have opt-outs. So if you are sending from Outlook and you're blind carbon copying everyone, which is not a good idea, there's so many other solutions and we'll talk about that in a second as far as how to um, send emails to lists or how to send commercial messages, make sure at the top, you have, if you're sending for this and you haven't had some form of opt-in, at the very top you say how to opt out. You can also have it at the bottom, but I just recommend that if someone gets an irritated with you to just make sure that it's easy and they understand that they can opt out and it saves your brand face and um, it also complies with the FTC's Can Spam Act. Um, so the opt-out methods could be something like you uh, you have to hit reply and use in the um, subject opt out or um, you hit a link and it allows you to opt out that way, right? So it doesn't have to be something where it's completely automated. It just You need to make sure that if someone replies to you and says, please opt out in whatever fashion, you've let them know how they can do it and then that you actually do it within 10 days. Um, very important that you make that speedy uh, change so that you're taking them off of there. So again, that point that we just went over was making sure that an opt-out is available if you're not making people opt-in. So the last point is that a commercial email must be labeled as an advertisement and present the reader with the business's postal address. That's another thing small businesses are missing out on is that they send out these um, emails to, it doesn't have to be to other businesses or to con consumers, right? It could be sending out to um, the press or sending out to another email list that's like friends and family. You're missing out on that opt-in piece and then you're missing out on the um, labeled as an advertisement piece with the postal address. Now many of you know that one of these solutions that you could be using is something like a marketing, uh, an email marketing uh, solution like Constant Contact, Aweber, um, which we'll talk about in a second. And it clearly states that you have to have your postal address at the bottom, right? And not only is that good to comply with the FTC's can, can Spam Act, but it's just a nice brand reminder that, hey, we are a real business. We're here, <coughs> excuse me, doing business. And so you can contact us at any time. We're not just some kind of crazy loon that's out here sending you strange messages. <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry to cough into the mic. So let's talk about your brand. We've been talking about, we just went over the four points that you need to include in your emails. Now let's talk about emailing and how to make sure that your brand is seen in the best light. Um, now we talked about how you don't have to make it so that someone opts in to be an email, in, in an email list, but as a small business owner, it's best to confirm that the recipient would like to be on your list. Um, and you can do this if you're at a networking event, just saying, hey, would it be okay if I email, add you to the email list? And most people will be polite and say yes, right? They're not going to say no. Um, but at least you're warning them that you're going to be email, emailing them, and they'll remember that when they, res when they see your email in the inbox. <coughs> Excuse me. And then just to make sure that um, you allow them to opt out and try and be, that's the next point, in that easy opt out method, make it so that if they're breaking the ties, it's not awkward. So put it in some form of language that um, when you're writing the copy that says, hey, 
um, while you can click to opt it out, I'll, I'll be really bummed, um, and here's some things that you'll miss, that kind of a thing. So it, it puts the pressure off of it so that they can opt out, but um, it won't be awkward kind of a thing. So I guess that wouldn't be the best language, the one that I used before, but something that takes the pressure off of them so that they'll do that versus just clicking blacklist or trying to ignore your email in that way. So the last point is to provide quality content in all of your emails. Um, making sure that you send out things that aren't just purely commercial. And when you look at the FTC PDF, um, that I'll include a link to on this video probably below, um, you'll see that it includes a uh, language that, you know, to make something more relationship-based, it'll talk a little bit about your current products that they're using. So if someone's a web hosting member and we add in a new service and we send something to them, um, that at the very beginning, to make it something that's not considered something that's regulated by the CAN Spam Act, that uh, it's more relationship-based at the top, talking about how great the summer is, and thank you so much for being a web hosting member, and below it's saying, oh, by the way, we've got this new product we'd love to have you do something with, right? So thinking about that, making it, I believe it's the 80-20 rule, right, where it's 20% sell, 80% relationship building. Um, just thinking about that, not necessarily just for, you know, the legal reasons behind uh, the Can Spam Act, but more so just to protect your brand image. So the next one that we wanted to talk about um, was just to finish up those email. Let me pull this up over here was the email programs that you could be used. I mentioned AWeber um, was one of them, but the first one I wanted to talk about was Constant Contact because this is the solution that we've used for years. And it's, we've gotten the best um, uh, open rate from and also the best bounce rate from because they've, they've been in this business for a very long time. They have great relationships with a lot of ISPs, and so they're able to get their emails into inboxes. Um, it's a great interface to use. They've been making a lot of improvements over the last year even. So if you've used Constant Contact a couple years ago, bounce back over to it and try it again. Um, a lot of drag and drop type pieces, a lot of just click and what you see is what you get type of editing, a lot of different templates too that you'll really enjoy. And so the next one um, is just like I was saying, a Weber, which Ovalai is now switching over to, um, primarily because it's just got a lot of uh, additional features that are a little bit more complex that most small business owners uh, won't need at the moment but they may need in the future. And AWeber um, allows you to segment and do all sorts of crazy stuff with it at a very affordable price point. So there are a lot of email marketing um, solutions that you can go with. I've just found that AWeber has an affordable solution with a lot of different features in it and constant contact affordable solution that's reliable. Out of all of the email providers out there that it's like constant contact, MailChimp, iContact, we really have found that Constant Contact gets your email message delivered, right? Because not only are we talking about specific messages that will make after someone has received the email, opened it up, and has been able to read it and decide whether or not you feel spammy or not and will blacklist you, um, but it's also the question of getting through filters that uh, different hosting providers or different servers have on them. So, right? So you need to think about, is this email is even going to get through the filters to end up in the inbox? And so a lot of these email providers, um, email marketing providers will provide you with some kind of points, um, point system or tips on how to make sure that your subject line doesn't have too many numbers in it or too many symbols, doesn't use s certain spammy feeling words that a filter will flag as being spam. So, just a few things to talk about. Now let's just quickly go over what we talked about at the very beginning as far as the Can Spam Act, and then I'll go ahead and let you guys go. So the, uh, you, again, you've been watching the Cloud Maven. Um, this is a weekly live stream live class that we do here at Ovalai TV, and we were talking about the Can Spam compliant emails what's considered spam, and it's not necessarily something that you have to opt into, right, in order um, for it to be considered spam that you didn't opt in. Um, it's any commercial message or bulk email that's sent out that is, uh, can be regulated under the Can Spam Act. Um, and then, then we talked about what happens if you spam. The idea that you'd be blacklisted is the biggest one. Tarnishing your brand is another thing. And then being reported to the FTC is, of course, something we want to all think about. But I highly doubt most of you small business owners are going to get that far into it. 
Complying is easy. Making sure your header information accurately identifies who you are. Subject is true. That you include small business owners. Listen to this. That you include the opt-out me- uh, method for any commercial or, or bulk emails. Um, and then, of course, that it's labeled as an advertisement and includes your postal address. And then we finished up with making sure just some little points as far as confirming um, that the someone wants to be on your list, that you provide them with an easy opt-out method with no pressure, and that you provide quality content. And so if you have any further questions about this subject, make sure that you contact me on Twitter. I'm at hashtag Ovaline. Go ahead and put that up in the lower third um, down here. Now, if you want to receive additional email or uh, more videos like this, make sure that you subscribe to uh, the Ovali YouTube channel, Ovali Support. We have a few other ones, Ovali Vlog. We have our shows here on Ovali.tv with home, of, home Office Lifestyle. Small businesses do it better in young female entrepreneurs. And so we'd love to have you stick around and be part of the Ovali community. Otherwise, thank you so much for being part of our live stream today. And hopefully we'll see you back here next week at 11 a.m. Pacific to Eastern. And you can find out all about our upcoming shows at Ovali.tv slash calendar. Thanks so much.